Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website, which is eight self-improvement lessons that I've learned from well over a thousand clients in my practice of 31 years as a family therapist. Many of my clients, and perhaps members of your family or even you, have been divorced. So have I. I have done a lot of thinking and research on why do relationships fail? Why do people divorce? It's the last thing they want. Um, one way of looking at divorce, what causes divorce, is that each person, each mate, makes up to three wrong decisions at the right at, at the time they think they're right decisions, but actually they're wrong. I want to outline for you in this video uh, quickly what are these three choices that people often make in error. They are one or both mates choose the wrong person at the wrong time for the wrong reasons. As history shows, as life progresses, they look backwards and say, oh, that wasn't a wise choice when I was dating, recording. What is the right person to choose when you're dating and you're considering or longing for a primary relationship? There are lots of opinions on this, but one that you will not find very often unless you have studied lesson one in the Break the Cycle nonprofit free educational website. One characteristic of the right person to choose as a mate is that she or he either has minimal psychological wounds from childhood trauma or she or he is aware of their wounds and is working intentionally to reduce them. My proposal and my observation for doing lots of couples therapy with hundreds and hundreds of troubled people is that a very high percentage, meaning perhaps 90% or more, of troubled couples are what I call grown wounded children, GWCs. They have inherited, through no fault of their ancestors, major psychological wounds. Shame, guilt, distrust, reality distortion, difficulty bonding, things like that. Such wounded people choose each other unconsciously as mates. When you have two people who are wounded and don't know it, it's unlikely that their relationship will be mutually satisfying and will last. So one characteristic of the right person to choose when you're dating seriously is, is my partner a grown wounded child? Lesson one in the Break the Cycle website site shows you how to assess this. The second thing that uh, characterizes the right person is they are aware. That has two meanings. One, they're aware of themselves, of your relationship, of you. Um, they see and pay attention to what's going on inside them and around them. The other of two meanings is they are knowledgeable. In that sense, they are aware of some fundamental knowledge. My experience as a therapist is a very high percentage of people in troubled relationships or who have divorced don't know what they need to know. My nonprofit website provides seven specific topics that in my judgment, people absolutely need to know in order to live successful, holistically healthy lives. So the right person is someone who, in some way, is making headway learning these seven, six or seven subjects. You can find out if your partner knows enough by taking the quizzes. There's a whole group of quizzes in the Break the Cycle website. Check your own knowledge and check theirs. Okay. The third requisite of the right person to choose when you're dating <clears throat> is that their family, their blood and legal relatives show 
signs of being a high nurturance family. If you don't know what that is, see lesson five in my website. There are specific characteristics of families that are minimally wounded, who, whose adults are knowledgeable enough. There are specific traits that show this is a high nurturance family. Your beloved partner ideally should come from a high nurturance family. The last characteristic of the right person to choose is someone who does not have the symptoms of blocked or incomplete grief. What I've observed over the years is many people who have personal and relationship problems because of their wounds and their unawareness, meaning ignorance, they have not been able to grieve some very significant losses in their life, starting in early childhood. Divorce, prior divorce, brings a lot of losses, as you very well know. Many people um, who are addicted, who are obese, who are chronically depressed, quote unquote, these are suggestive symptoms that they may not have been able to grieve major losses. If your beloved person that you're dating has symptoms like these, yellow light, they are probably not the right person to choose unless they have self-motivated desire to fix this. So, choosing the right mate with these four characteristics is one thing you can do to avoid divorce and enjoy uh, primary partnership bliss. The second type of wrong choice, wrong courtship choice that people make is they decide to get uh, to exchange vows and get committed at the wrong time. What is the wrong time? Uh, once again, these same characteristics provide leadership, guidance. If you have not assessed yourself for psychological wounds and you're considering uh, committing to a primary partner, that is the wrong time. Don't commit until you have seriously, honestly assessed yourself for psychological wounds and, by the way, assessed your beloved partner. The second clue that it's the wrong time to commit to a primary partner is if you cannot pass, pass the quizzes in lessons one through six or one through seven if you're a step family. That means you are unaware uh, and you're ignorant of some extremely vital knowledge. So make progress on learning this knowledge. An easy free way to do that is to study the Break the Cycle website. A third characteristic, if it is not the right time for you to commit, not a healthy time, is if you have any symptoms of incomplete grief. As I said before, a high percentage of people with personal, physiological, psychological relationship problems have not grieved some major losses in their lives starting in their childhood. They come from dysfunctional families who have an anti-grieving policy and they have blocked grief. Common signs of that are obesity, depression, and addiction. If you have any symptoms like that, focus on healing your wounds and finishing your grief before you choose a partner. Choosing a partner is not going to help you. It'll add stress, not reduce stress. The last uh, trait of the right time, one of many, by the way, but a major trait, is if you, in the opinion of someone who knows you well and is ob objective, if another person says, you really have detached and are no longer dependent on your parenting adults, your primary adults, you don't depend on them financially, psychologically, for shelter, for clothing, for support, for encouragement. You may 
benefit from those things, but you don't need them. If you are truly independent, then green light it may be the right time to commit. So, you have a few wounds, you have assessed yourself for wounds, you've assessed yourself for requisite awareness and knowledge, you've assessed yourself for symptoms of unfinished grief, and you've assessed yourself for being independent enough of your parents. Then it's probably the right time to choose a beloved partner. The third um, unwise choice that many divorced parents and divorced mates make is they may have the right uh, person and the right time, but they choose for the wrong reasons. If they do, by the way, it's usually a sign that they are significantly wounded and don't know it. What's the right reason for choosing a primary relationship? There are lots of opinions on this. I would say summarily, a key right reason, wise reason, is I really want to share my life with another person who I love and respect and cherish. I want companionship, uh, stimulation, I want intimacy. I want to share the world with another person who I dearly love and enjoy being with and do not feel dependent on and who is not dependent on me. That roughly is the right reason to commit. There are lots of wrong reasons. One of them is, I love this person, they're really floundering, I want to rescue them. Bad choice. I want to prove something to somebody. Somebody says, I'm not the marrying kind, I'll never be successful, no one will love me. Oh yeah? I'll show you. I'll get married. See? Bad reason for committing. How about, I am so tired of the dating scene. It's phony, it's plastic, it's full of anxiety and uncertainty. False starts, I'm just tired of it. I want to end it. Not a good reason to commit. The last bad reason I have seen or heard from some people is, I just want to be normal. I'm tired of being single. Single, or, single people are less than. People who have mates are socially normal. In the norm. I want to be normal. Bad reason for choosing a partner. The theme is, be aware of why you want to commit. Get some honest feedback from people who know you and are willing to give you honest opinions. Are you choosing for the right reasons or for wrong reasons? This video is an attempt based on 31 years clinical experience to provide a set of criteria for making three wise courtship choices. Criteria for picking the right mate and their family, by the way, a functional family, at the right time for the right reasons. If you pay attention to these questions and honestly reach, research them patiently, take your time, uh, your odds for a long-term, happy, successful marriage or commitment go way up. I urge you to raise your odds Invest time and effort studying lessons one through four, better one through six, in my nonprofit educational Break the Cycle website. Notice your reaction. If it's, well, I'll get around to it sometime, oh, baloney, psychobabble, that's probably your false self who's running your life and you don't know it. See lesson one. Have a good life.